Ikhlas, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good day to everyone So I hope that everyone uh, Still in good shape, good conditions No sehat Right, tak ada apa-apa Symptom-symptom penyakit yang boleh menyebabkan you guys uh, Berfikiran celaru Okay, so uh, Alhamdulillah Kita jumpa lagi uh, for the second sh- uh, sessions of uh, for DNA cloning part 2 and I will start with uh, 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 normally I will start with a dua Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin wa salatu wa salam wa ala ashrafil anbiya wa al-mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi shrah li sadri wa silli amri wa halul u'atam bin lithani yafqaw kawli amma Okay, class. So, without further ado, um, let's continue our lecture. So, uh, for last week, uh, I already explained to you uh, the following term: source of DNA vector risk until uh, restriction enzyme. So, today I'm going to continue from ligations, and hopefully, inshallah, we're going to finish anti-selections of recombinants within uh, one one hour uh, more or less hopefully inshallah okay uh so let's go cont- uh, yeah before that um uh, i have some announcement to let you guys uh, know uh we already decided i mean uh the lecturers who teach mic uh, 2007 so already decided that for indi- individuals uh, assignments and group assignments you have to do uh, you know sort of like a video uh, for example uh, for example for indi- individual assignments you have to do a video and you have post you have to post on Instagram so everyone should have an Instagram with a uh, specific hashtag so we will to we will evaluate your uh, video on instagram and we give you mark 20 percent uh for that and for uh, group assignments you ha- you still have to do your your 3d models but you have to make it in video form right so we'll uh upload the instructions in the Google Classroom so that everyone can uh, read the instructions and understand what you have to do and if you have questions you can uh, freely ask me anytime lah. okay so bismillah let's continue our uh, lesson which is continued for all ligations and uh, yeah for ligations is where uh, DNA uh, or our plasmic vector and our uh, uh, genes of interest after being cut by restriction enzyme so they have to be uh, ligated so this is what this one is sticky end without ligation so after ligation so everyone is a uh, compound joined together so the join together process uh, is conducted by a DNA ligase okay so it's uh, naturally, DNA ligases have applications in both DNA replications and DNA repair. So DNA replication, as I mentioned to you guys, in Okazaki fragment, right? So DNA is been replicated by segmented, and the fragment segmented will be combined by DNA ligase. And in the DNA repair, uh, I think I touch it a little bit. So for, for example, uh, your skin has been exposed to UV, ne? And then in UV, it will cause you some some mutations. Okay, so that particular mutations also maybe may uh, the mutation occur in a specific nucleotide. So satu nucleotide tu saja dia telah dimutate. For example, C dia tu uh, boleh dah mutate dia jadi T, right? So that T need to be removed and replaced with C, right? So, bila si, uh, uh, a T itu tadi telah di remove, dia akan tinggalkan a nick. So, dia akan ada ting- tinggalkan satu uh, main tempat kosong lah. Alright. So, bila C diisi, alright, then DNA lagis akan seal the repair uh, uh, place. Okay. 
function. So that's function of the DNA ligase, both in DNA replication and DNA repair. And the important things is DNA ligase activity needs the ATP, right? But first, but uh, DNA ligase need, needs energy. So bila diperlukan energy, energy come from ATP. And DNA ligase uh, has extensive use in molecular biology laboratories for genetic recombinants and experiment. Of course, lah, macam kita bincangkan sekarang. Right, then let's go to gene transfer. Right, so the gene transfer means that the transformation. Lah. So from the uh, uh, plasmid with your uh, gene of interest, so how we can transform it into a specific host. So for number one, uh, bacteria, for example, E. coli. Lah. So been widely used uh, because the genomic are well understood and the gene product is purified uh, from the from from host cell and the second uh, host is yeast I mean mostly the, the very famous yeast that been used in the recombinant as a host for expression we call it uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae uh, right so uh, a budding yeast so it used uh, is it a bit it, it used because it easily grown and its genomic are known so it's very important that uh, we have to know uh, uh, the genomes of the host so that it can be altered so engineered the way that we want lah. and it, it may express eukaryotic genes easily right which as I mentioned dulu cakap so kalau uh, gene of interest sudah so eukaryotic maybe dia perlukan eukaryotic punya host Right, so for uh, kalau gene tu adalah from bacteria, maybe dia perlukan prokaryotic punya host. So sometimes dia akan tukar lah. Dia uh, eukaryotic gene kadang-kadang boleh juga express dalam prokaryot. So it depends uh, how the function of the protein yang kita nak tu is working properly or not in uh, design uh, designated host. And it continuously secrete the gene uh, the gene product. So, maksud dekat sini means that, for example, uh, yang saya selalu bagi dalam kelas is insulin lah. So, in insulin production, insulin is a protein. So, apa yang dia maksudkan dengan secret uh, uh, of of the gene product ni means that insulin, to, uh, kalau kita uh, expresskan insulin punya gene tu kat dalam yeast, so insulin protein tu akan di secret up dekat dalam medium. So, bila di secret up kat dalam media, easy for us to harvest. Okay, meanwhile, dalam bacteria, the gene product need to be purified from host cell. Purified means that, uh, for example, uh, sama juga insulin dalam bacteria. So, kalau dalam yeast tadi, dia akan secret out kan? So, insulin tu akan keluar dekat the, the whole media. Senang kita nak ambil, kita tak kecau yeast tu. Tapi kalau dalam uh, bacteria E. coli, mostly, uh, the, uh, the insulin that been produced, expressed by the bacteria, it is simpan in the bacteria itself. So it accumulates in the bacteria. So uh, how do we want to get uh, to, uh, to purify the uh, to to uh, uh, take out or purify the insulin from the E. coli? Is that we have to break down the E. coli? We have to crush the E. coli. Kita perlu pecahkan E. coli tadi supaya insulin tu keluar dekat uh, media lah. Baru kita boleh harvest tu covers the insulin. So, uh, that's the uh, advantage lah kalau kita pakai yeast. And easily collect and uh, purify. So, senang kita nak collect gene product tu tadi, protein for example insulin tu tadi and senang to purify. And plant cell are and whole plants, right? So, plant cell boleh juga dipakai as a host untuk the inner combination may express eukaryotic gene easily, right? Plant are easily grown and produce plant with new properties. And the last one is mammalian cell. So mammalian cell ni, dia sangat senang untuk express eukaryotic gene to itself lah. So, of course mammalian pun eukaryotic. But then, uh, satu disadvantage or drawbacks of mammalian cell ni, dia susah nak hidup, harder to grow. They, we have to, you know, take care of the cell, macam kita jaga, uh, uh, human yang lain lah, macam kita jaga anak kita atau macam, macam kita jaga adik kita but it's very sensitive and mainly mammalian cell ni dipakai untuk medical usage ok uh, this is method of gene transfer method of gene transfer, there are 3 method of gene transfer lah 
So, uh, as you know, that there are three types of genetic material, double stranded uh, DNA segments, oligonitride, uh, oligonucleotide, short uh, nucleotides of uh, oligo, right, yang, yang pendek tu, and then cDNA, alright, cDNA sequence. And uh, transfection is a method of introducing new DNA into eukaryotic cells. So, nama dia tran transfection lah, bila kita nak masukkan a plasmid with our gene of interest to masuk ke dalam bacteria atau masuk dalam yeast mammalian, mammalian ke uh, plant cell ke nama dia transfections ok ada, ti, <coughs> ada tiga uh, uh, I mean method for example for the first one is physical method physical method ni is involve micro injections biolistics or electroporation lah and chemical method uh, involve lipids and liposome made it gene transfer or non liposomal and the last one is biological method. Uh, it's involved conjugation, transformation, transductions, or agrobacterium mediated. And so we're going to uh, we're going to explain to you one by one. Okay. So uh, the gene transfer can be transient or stable. Transient of transient of transient of stable. Ni maksud dia. Uh, the tra transient expression, uh, tra transient trans transfection, DNA is not integrated to the host chromosome temporarily but high expressions of target gene. So transient ni maksud dia, uh, kita punya gene of interest tak incorporate pun dengan DNA host. Whereas in the stable transfection, a foreign DNA is integrated into the chromosomal DNA and the genetic of the recipient cell will be changed forever. Means that kalau kita, kalau kita dapat trans, uh, stable transfections, means that kita punya genes of interest tu dah incorporate dengan host punya DNA. So, ada dua benda yang berbeza lah dalam transfection mode ni. Yang pertama, transient uh, transfections and second one is stable transfection. Untuk transient transfections, then, uh, gene of our interest tak incorporate dengan DNA host whereas stable transfection, kita punya gene of interest incorporate dengan DNA punya host. Alright. Uh, this is micro injection, right? Micro injections yang uh, how dolly the ship is been produced. So in micro injection is the use of glass micro pipette to inject liquid substance into a living cell but may also include intracellular space. Okay? And then uh, it's involve a uh, a microscope with magnification power around 200 times some type of formation dissection through a microscope at 4 to 50 uh, uh, times or traditional compound type of microscope so either one lah kita boleh pakai and for example it's a nuclear transfer technique yang macam uh, I explained to you last week uh, where uh, dolly the ship uh, is being created it's not much created lah sebenarnya I know he, human cannot create any li living things, right? We believe that our God create the living things. So, kita ni macam, uh, how to say, uh, very unethical lah. Okay, tapi kat sini is for sake of the sign lah. Kita buat, kita buat research. Right, so this is the uh, example of uh, how micro-ejection is been conducted. Okay, macam yang Last week I explained. So this is the egg, right? So the egg of the fertilized eggs, and this is a, a pipette that sucks the egg. So kita nak 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 biar dia, uh, the eggs is being how to say in steady state. So senang kita nak inject a foreign DNA kat dalam ni, right? Kalau kita tak pegang ni tak ada suction tadi, so susah lah egg nak kamera gerak 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 lah. Okay. So uh, basically untuk micro injection ni dia ada two method right the first method is embryonic uh, stem cell so embryonic stem cell ni they involve uh, uh, of course it's involve embryonic stem cell lah. so embryonic stem cell ni uh, right don't you okay so you imagine uh, the sperm right so dia masuk ke dalam Egg, alright. Egg uh, from uh, male egg, masa senyawaan. So dia dah masuk masuk masuk, dia masuk ke dalam uh, male punya egg. So bila masuk dalam male punya egg, uh, sperm tu tadi akan fertilize dengan 
uh, male punya egg eh? so bila dia dah fertilize after 4 to 5 days dia akan uh, involve uh, dia akan uh, jadi um, uh, blastosis right? so blastosis ni tadi blastosis ni tadi dalam blastosis tu actually dia ada in baronic stem cell so dia ada bawa banyak kat sini lah so uh, dalam tu mungkin uh, ada dalam 50 hingga 150 uh, embryonic stem cell lah in between so embryonic stem cell tadi uh, when it continues uh, prolong of incubation kan dekat dalam perut mak kamu okay and embryonic stem cell tadi akan uh, will differentiate into a different different type of cell so dia boleh jadi nerve cell boleh jadi muscle cell boleh jadi gut cell boleh jadi the whole organ lah Uh, uh, kalau uh, there is a combination of the cell akan terbentuknya organ so everything is come from embryonic stem cell so for the purpose of uh, uh, embryonic stem cell method ni kita ambil kita uh, kita uh, extract out the embryonic stem cell from the blastocyst ni kita growthkan kat dalam uh, 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 lab right dalam uh, I don't know whether in petri dish or whatsoever we can grow it and we select for cell especially in the desired region so kita boleh pilih yang, yang, yang mana yang, yang kita nak then kita akan inject masuk kat dalam blastosis and new blastosis so blastosis ni tadi uh, ada, ada banyak inner cell mass lah kat sini right? inner cell mass ni consists of very stem cell lah so kita inject yang desired the, the one that we want then we implement it into the uterus for example a foster model of, of mouse so os, dah dapat offspring tadi boleh dapat offspring yang present dengan gene yang kita nak ni tadi baru kita buat observations right the second method is uh, pro nucleus method so pro nucleus method ni uh, happens upstream of the embryonic stem cell so it happen upstream of this uh, kind of system For example, it's like this. Okay, so as I mentioned just now, uh, this is a female, a male male egg lah, and sperm try to reach on, and luckily only one sperm is able to penetrate inside the egg, inside the egg. What the hell? Can you for for a while? Sorry guys, it's raining. Hari ni hujan petang pula. Usually it's my task, right? Untuk jemur baju, untuk angkat baju, untuk lipat baju, it's my task. And luckily my wife already you know, angkat. Apa yang di hujan? Hujan dah turun. <laughs> okay, so let's continue. Uh, okay, where we were? Okay, this one. So, bila sperm tu dah penetrate inside the male egg, right? So both of them ready to fertilize. So at this moment, kita panggil dia untuk uh, pro nucleus, pro nucleus untuk uh, female and pro nucleus from uh, <laughs> pro nucleus from female and pro nucleus from male. And at this stage, both egg pro nucleus are ready to fertilize. So dekat sini lah tadi the pro nucleus method will, will take over okay so when they ready to fertilize not fertilize yet and both are not uh, uh, just ready for fertilize kita inject the desired gene yang kita nak with a vector right ke dalam pro nuclei so bila pro nuclei ni uh, uh, been injected by desired uh, uh, gene with our desired gene right So, dia akan uh, uh, fusion lah. Right, dia akan fusion between the, because ni carry half uh, chromosome, ni pun carry half chromosome kan. So, bila dah fusion both pro nuclei, baru dah akan jadi zygote and everything, baru jadi baby, what so on, so of course. So, uh, pro nuclei method ni, uh, 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 
it, it happen upstream of the embryonic stem cell so kita boleh pilih mana satu method yang sesuai yang kita nak pakai so once we we injected the implant in the in the uterus of the uh, foster mother then test of screen for present of the gene kalau ada gene ni tidak then baru kita buat observe observation so that the one that this is two method lah dalam micro injection okay and uh, dolly the ships been produced from uh, the uh, pro nucleus uh, method okay ni gambar yang tak clear sepatutnya ni gambar sama je tapi tak clear and then I ambil a new picture Right, so micro injections. Okay, so to transfer gene into animal, inject the RDNA is ribosome DNA with a fine glass needle into the pronuclear present in the embryo, 12 to 4 hours after fertilization. So during the after fertilization, to before fusion, kita dah inject masuk. Okay, a pronuclear of nucleus of a sperm or uh, egg cell during process uh, of fertilization after the sperm enter the ovum. But before they fuse, right? Yeah, before before they fuse, but then ready for ready uh, for fertilizer. Mani dia dah setiap sedia fertilizer to fertilize, and before it been fused, then baru kita boleh inject. Sperm and egg cell are haploid, mean they are carry half number of the chromosome as I mentioned before lah. Okay, then transfer into a foster mother, then it can develop into a normal animal. Saling kita tengok and observe the offspring. Right, next we go to the bio uh, biolistic. Alright, biolistic is uh, theoretically is almost the same like micro injections, but this one is uh, mainly uh, the methods been used uh, for uh, plant for plant. Okay. So, biolistic is a micro-particle gun. So, dalam biologi pun kita ada gun lah. Dia panggil micro-particle gun or a gene gun. Right? Kalau you search kat Google, kalau you search gene gun, dia akan keluar lah information about gene gun. Uh, biolistic or bioballistic particle delivery system, particle bombard bombardment were accelerated uh, micro-projectile delivered then in straight into the cell. So, that bila dia tembak, uh, DNA tadi, DNA itu akan masuk ke dalam uh, kita punya DNA on test akan masuk ke dalam uh, cell uh, uh, host expression lah. so DNA to be transformed are coated uh, into microscopic beads coated with gold or uh, tungsten so usually prefer using gold lah sebab gold dia, dia uh, non-reactive uh, particle so, sebab apa kita pakai gold ni gold ni dia, uh, dia akan enhance uh, the delivery of the, uh, the uh, gene of interest, the gene of interest masuk ke dalam host and also can be uh, detected lah, easily to detect which cell yang, yang telah uh, trimmer deliver uh, the DNA sequence the, 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 the DNA of interest to our interest untuk transform ke dalam cell tu tadi ok so this is the, the uh, schematic diagrams on the gene, uh, gun gene ok so uh, the uh, our DNA coated with particle ready here with the plastic disc. So bila uh, the helium gas is been uh, how to say already of the pressure is increased in the gun, baru dia akan tembak everything. So everything uh, including DNA and gold particle tadi lah. So bila dia dah tembak both of uh, the DNA gold particle tu akan masuk dekat this stopped this stopped by screen means that it's easy for them to disperse the DNA coated gold particle so dia tak ada direct macam macam peluru kan so bila screen ni dia dia macam peluru tabur yes so peluru tabur tu tadi peluru tabur tu sebab apa dia panggil peluru tabur sebab bila kita tembak senapang tu peluru dia bertaburan it's not like normal senapang tembak dia keluar direct kan macam sniper kan it's not like that lah so this is actually macam peluru tabur tu tadi lah and then some of the beat may pass through the cell wall into the cytoplasm of, of the targeted cell so mainly the the, uh, the uh, gun gene use uh, with the host yang ada cell cell wall contoh dia tadi plant lah right uh, target plant cell <coughs> okay 
And uh, the uh, second method is uh, micro injection, uh, ganji, and the third one is el electroporation. So electroporation ni mainly we use for yeast. Okay, so bila kita nak jadikan yeast to buy host, kita nak transform, uh, transfect. <coughs> kita nak transfect or transform kita punya plasmid itu masuk dalam yeast, usually kita pakai electro. Operation. Nama pun electro. So, kita akan pakai electric current. So, then uh, it can be delivered directly into cell using ele ele electrical pass. Okay, it's actually a machine now. Machine. So, bila kita masukkan uh, kita punya band of tube uh, along with the our our gene of interest or plasmid dengan our uh, 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 yeast. So, kita masuk, kita tekan dia. Krek, krek dia bunyi. So, bila bunyi tu, dia dah pulse and the pulse actually will increase the permeability of the cell membrane pore formation lah. so dia akan jadi dia akan bentuk pore formation dekat keliling uh, uh, membrane cell tu supaya dia ni kita boleh fit in boleh masuk right so this allow chemical drugs or DNA to be introduced into the cell so dia panggil electroporation ah, macam ni lah exactly right So during the e field ni, during kita kena kankaran tu, dia akan uh, terbuka uh, dia punya uh, how to say dia punya uh, cell membrane nya pole, okay? So after pulse, cell tend to be healed lah with gene or drug inside. So lepas jadi kita pulse, kita kena uh, uh, incubate the cell uh, on the ice lah supaya pole tu tadi boleh uh, close, uh, close close back right and the yeast uh, is curing okay and the fourth one is chemical method right chemical methods uh, right so chemical method mainly is involved liposome or uh, spear of lipid that can transport molecules into cell So, kalau ingat, you belajar biochemistry part 1, part 1, eh? part 1. So, uh, mainly uh, uh, chemical uh, method ni, mainly liposome ni, uh, it involve a drug delivery lah. So, drug delivery system. So, bila drug delivery system, boleh juga dipakai untuk buat transformation to introduce kita punya uh, 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 for uh, genes of interest kat dalam uh, kita punya host. So it promotes transport after fusing, uh, fusing with the cell. So kalau kita tengok sini, lipid bilayer dia rasa kan kita punya cell pun lipid bilayer uh, punya structure kan. So it can fuse together and it can release in kita punya genes of interest or topoplasmic. Right. Uh, Non-liposomal, alright, tadi liposomal. So, kalau non-liposomal, mainly kita akan uh, pakai calcium phosphate made in transfer. So, apa tu calcium phosphate? It's isolated DNA will mix with the mixture of the calcium chloride and potassium phosphate. So, we did pakai calcium chloride uh, and kita, kita pakai juga potassium phosphate. Uh, potassium phosphate ni as a buffer lah. Okay, the solution will incubate with the cell. A fractions of the cell will take the uh, calcium phosphate part, uh, precipitate into endocytosis. So it means that, okay, calcium chloride ni tadi, alright, calcium chloride ni actually have a positive ion. Lah. So bila it have positive ions, it will help to carry uh, the plasmid DNA which is have, <laughs> which is have a neg negative charge. So bila dah stick, that can uh, help Uh, to bring the DNA plasmid to the uh, membranes uh, uh, of the cell, right? Lipopolis, uh, lipopolisaccharide, eh? So, lipopolisaccharide pun negative charge. So, bila dia bawa positive charge, positive charge calcium ion tu akan attach dengan uh, DNA dan akan bawa dekat uh, mem membrane of the uh, cell. Why? Right, so this is the diagram of calcium phosphate mediated gene transfer. Okay, 
So then they in phosphate buffer, kat dalam uh, buffer, uh, phosphate, phosphate buffer ni lah. Okay, then they kita masukkan dalam phosphate buffer. Then kita add on calcium chloride. So bila add on calcium chloride, calcium chloride tu tadi akan cooperate dengan DNA, positive and negative charge. Right? So dia akan uh, helps to bring in the uh, DNA calcium phosphate precipitate uh, exactly dekat cell of the membrane yang negative charge. So, bila dah lekat kat sini, senang lah. Fuse using uh, phagocytosis. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, biological method of gene transfer. Widely used strategy to get a gene into your current cell leading to transcription and translation. Uh, the four method. Uh, where kita pakai conjugations, bacterial transformation, Retroviral transductions ataupun agrobacterium made it transfer. So, kita akan pergi the first one is conjugations. So, conjugation ni uh, semua orang dah tahu lah. Alright, guna uh, sex pili. So, yang ni, yang ni ada F plasmid, ni tak ada F plasmid. So, donor ni recipient akan go through sex pili lah. Alright, and then the next one is transformation. Right. So transformation ni uh, sama juga tadi macam-macam yang I explain ni tadi right calcium phosphate mediated transfer ni Okay so mainly kita pakai calcium chloride so yang ni dia bagi example transformation with DNA uh, fragments lah and ni transformation with plasmid so DNA uh, along with our vector so lebih kurang sama saja Okay, so kalau plasmid, okay, beza dia adalah kalau DNA fragment sahaja, usually uh, it naturally happen kat dalam bacteria not with uh, our for, force. Okay, so dia akan in, dia akan intake the DNA fragments, alright, then uh, either the the the, the 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 foreign DNA is uh, how to say, been digested by recession enzyme sebab foreign kan? foreign DNA. So, this is the uh, denotes, uh, denote by unsuccessful transformation. So, kalau DNA ni tadi incorporate dengan uh, uh, DNA of the host, so kita panggil successful transformation lah. And that can form a stable transformation. And kalau along with our uh, plasmid DNA, alright, kalau kita berjaya, right, stable cell line ni tadi, that takkan incorporate lah dengan uh, host of the, uh, host of the uh, DNA of the Okay. So mainly this is we call a uh, transient expression. This is stable tra 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 uh, uh, tra transfection. Okay. okay. And then next is viral mediated gene. So viral mediated gene ni kita pakai virus. Right? Macam minggu lepas pun uh, 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 apa ni? Uh, I dah explain uh, uh, ones of the methods to uh, do the DNA recombination to express kat dalam cell kita pakai virus back by COVID chain so in vi uh, viral mediated gene transfer we call we use transduction lah transduction is a process by which DNA is transferred from one bacterium to another by a virus okay it also refer to the process whereby foreign DNA is introduced into another cell via viral vector okay so this is the process, okay? So uh, number one, the bacteriophage uh, recognize a host, right? Then the kind of landing, the uh, cell tu tadi. So one is landing, that can inject lah, inject kita punya uh, phage DNA, right? Yang yang carry kita punya gene of interest. So bila dia masuk dekat dalam cell tu tadi, dia ada dua pilihan. Either dia nak pergi kat lytic cycle ataupun lysogenic cycle. So, we can control the situation as well. So, kalau dia learn lytic cycle in normal bacteriophage uh, trans, uh, transduction tadi, dia masuk, dia akan kacau the whole system. Then, uh, by, uh, uh, the, the uh, DNA uh, of bacteriophage tadi akan to say, control uh, the bacteria system and ask them to uh, replicate. Uh, bacteriophage punya DNA. So, bila dah replicate, replicate, replicate. So, uh, apa ni? Head been replicate, neck been replicate, tail been replicate, everything is been replicate. So, bila dah assemble dekat dalam cell, dia akan pecah keluar lah. Okay. Otherwise, dia boleh juga choose as a lysogenic 
cycle. Let's say plasogenic cycle means that the uh, foreign DNA being introduced can pro propagate, incorporate with the DNA host. Pergi sebagai, uh, this is the profage. Okay. So, sama juga dia, dia dah integrate uh, the cell divide. So, the replicate divide, replicate divide, replicate divide. So, dia akan uh, carry uh, the foreign DNA yang kita introduce tadi. Okay. Sampai masa kalau dia nak Choose masuk dalam lytic cycle, right? They can uh, but out uh, from the host DNA and will enter the lytic cycle. Okay, <coughs> the last uh, method of biological method is by using agrobacterium mediated tran transfer. So agrobacterium uh, agrobacterium ni is the name of bacteria. The full name is agrobacterium tumefaciens. It's a soil born gram negative bacterium so they are neg the gram negative bacteria lah. it invades many dicot plants when they are injured at the soil level and cause crown gall disease so bacterium ni tadi uh, is they ni uh, suka uh, take advantage lah right kalau plant tu ada injured so they can penetrate uh, uh, by the injured entry lah dia akan masuk dia ada luka kat Tu tadi, akan masuk ke dalam, uh, luka tu tadi. And the ability that to cause crown gall disease, so disease yang, yang disebabkan lagi agrobacterium tadi, is associated with the presence of the TI, right? Tumor inducing plasmid within the bacterial cell. Okay, kat dalam agrobacterium tadi, actually dari satu plasmid. So satu pl uh, plasmid ni dipanggil sebagai TI, alright? Tumor inducing plasmid, alright? So, tumor in the, in the, uh, inducing plasmid tadi dia. It can trigger crown gall disease. So, for instance, agrobacterium to berjaya penetrate, but the penit the agrobacterium that penetrate penetrate the uh, injured uh, locations, they tak carry uh, TI plasmid. So means that crown gall disease tu tak kan uh, terhasil lah on on that particular plant. Right, TI plasmid can be used to transport new gene into the plant cell. So when we found out. Uh, this is the uh, special features of the TI plasmid. We use the TI, TI plasmid to transport new gene into the, the plant. So how they do it? How they do it? You will watch lah. How they do it? They do it like this. Okay. So in acrobacterium tumor efficiency, in tadi ada TI, right? So TI plasmid in tadi they be engineered and entered. Uh, they akan masukkan restriction enzyme side lah. Uh, uh, multiple cloning site. So, bila masuk uh, multiple cloning site ni, kita boleh uh, insert our DNA uh, gene of interest tadi masuk dalam plasmid ni lah. So, bila masuk dalam plasmid, masuk balik ke dalam microbiotum ni ataupun express dalam bus yang lain. So, dia akan masuk dalam plant ni tadi and uh, it easy uh, for the TI to ensure that our gene of interest incorporate dengan uh, plant punya uh, DNA. Okay, then they dapat trick yang baru. Okay, the one is the plasma infection from agrobacterium to to efficiency. Okay, next let's go to the bacterial transformation. Right, bacterial transformation ni uh, I've been explained to you on the uh, second class, first class if I'm not mistaken. So I think everyone are familiar lah. Okay, need just revision, normal revision lah. Okay. So, antibiotic sensitive bacteria, okay, kita transfer the plasmid uh, by using calcium chloride treatment, alright, alright, to permeate, to permeabilize permeable, uh, cell wall, okay, atau cell membrane. So senang DNA plas plasmid kita nak masuk, then kita growkan kat dalam a uh, 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 media that contain appropriate antibiotic. So, for example, they carry ampicillin resistant marker. So, kita, kita pakai media yang ada ampicillin. So, means that bacteria yang ada resistant marker saja yang boleh tumbuh. Okay. Uh, so, uh, inserting the recombinant DNA molecule into a competent E. coli cell. Okay, competent E. coli cell. The cell must be made competent by treating with calcium chloride or very little DNA will be taken up. Okay. Kalau normal bacteria, 
Alright, kalau normal bacteria, kalau kita transform normally, dia takkan jadi. Okay, so what we have to ensure that we have to treat the bacteria dengan calcium chloride supaya dia jadi competent cell. So normal bacteria when we treat it with calcium chloride, kita akan dia akan jadi sebagai competent competent cell. So means that dia punya uh, cell wall ni tadi become easily to permeabilize ok so bila dah senang permeabilize kita hit shock 2 uh, minit ni lama ni 1 minit je actually 1 minit pun sampai lah 1 minit pun lama kalau hit shock tak lama tak boleh jadi juga it depends on the bacteria jadi e. coli dalam 30 saat ataupun 20 saat is enough for hit shock bila hit shock plasmid bound yang dekat uh, exterior cell dia akan masuk ke dalam introducing site So when the DNA or plasmid be introduced masuk dalam baru kita pakai kalau baru kita panggil transform cell. Okay, uh, what is this? Okay, growth on agaptates. So growth on agaptate ni macam yang minggu lepas uh, I cerita lah about uh, esgar. Okay, so yeah. okay, so this is uh, normal vector lah vector without any insert. Okay, dia ada lag Z. So, bila dia ada lag Z, kita transform plasmid ni masuk ke dalam E. coli and then kita kita platekan dia atas <coughs> atas agar atau media yang ada ampicillin resistant plus esgal. So, ampicillin, sebab apa dia buat ampicillin? Sebab dia ada ampicillin marker resistant dia. Alright? So, bila dia tumbuh dia akan keluarkan warna, uh, koloni yang warna biru. Sebab apa? Sebab esgal tadi been uh, used by the beta galactosidase from the uh, lexi lah. Right? So, indicate there is no transformation. Okay? But then, bila vector tu dia insert dengan insert ligation yang kita punya gene of interest, kita dah kacau uh, lexi punya formation. So, bila dah kacau let Z punya formation, tak ada beta galactosidase. So, bila tak ada beta galactosidase, uh, uh, koloni yang tumbuh warna putih. So, yang ni warna biru yang tadi actually self-ligated vector lah. Self-ligated vector ni, macam yang explain yang tak ada insert. Okay. And then, kita kena ada control juga. Okay. Uh, control kat sini means that kita punya uh, negative control this is the positive control and this is the negative control negative control ni hanya kita punya uh, insert, so bila kita dah cut dengan RE kan, so kita kena ligate dengan vector, okay, kita simpan sikit untuk buat negative control ni. kita punya uh, insert ni tadi kita try to transform macam, no, macam normal transformation lah So, bila normal transformation, bila kita try to uh, plate on the ampicillin esgar plate media, so of course, uh, takkan ada yang tumbuh lah. Right? Sebab apa? Sebab tak ada vector yang ada ampicillin resistant, yang tak ada vector yang ada lexi punya uh, gene. So, hanya insert uh, self-ligated. So, kena, kita nak tengok macam mana insert ni boleh jadi uh, self-ligated or not. Okay, this is for uh, ampicillin selection. Alright, yeah, ampicillin selection ni, I uh, ingat you dah, dah faham lah. Alright, so apa kita pakai ampicillin uh, selection. Uh, ni pun you boleh baca sendiri. Okay, ni ada, ada terang lah. Some, okay, ada juga setengah vektor yang ada dua selective marker. Okay, either dia pakai ampicillin atau uh, either ampi, uh, uh, dalam example ni, either dia ada ampicillin ataupun tetracycline. So, bila dia ada dua antibody selective marker, so dekat dalam plate tadi, kita kena bubuh ampicillin, kita kena bubuh tetracycline juga lah. So, dua antibiotik. Right? <coughs> right. Ni pun oh, ampicillin sel selective agent ni. Right. Kalau LB tak ada ampicillin, so semua vector boleh tumbuh. Tapi kalau ada LB ada uh, ampicillin plate, only transform bacteria hanya growth right yang 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 be transform ah 
Okay. So, yang ni, yang ni tadi, daripada ni tadi lah. Okay. So, means that ni, dekat dalam plate ni ada yang warna biru dan ada yang warna putih. Yang warna putih ni, of course, uh, dia adalah recombinant. Recombinant, plasmid contain, kita punya DNA insert. Dan yang warna biru ni tadi adalah non recombinant, which is uh, the plasmid without our insert. Okay, sometimes uh, uh, kita dah potong uh, vector tu, tapi the self ligate kan. So, bila the self ligate, the exim tadi still boleh express and beta galactosidase pun still boleh be produced. Sebab tu dia jadi warna biru kat sini. Right, so this is a, a Lexi screening. I'm going to pass that screen to you juga. So Lexi gene code for beta galactosidase. Uh, Uh, lactose or Xgal is our screening agent. So kat dalam Lexi ni uh, dia punya induce uh, uh, protein or induce agents is lactose. Tapi kat dalam media kita tu kita tak berbual lactose. Kita pakai X, Xgal. So Xgal ni adalah substitute to the lactose. Syn synthesis of the lactose. So Xgal ni synthesis of the lactose. Okay so for example This is the uh, empty vector, normal empty vector. So, bila normal empty vector, the exigen ni uh, is been able to uh, express and beta galactosidase is being produced. So, that's why uh, lactosin tadi boleh tukar kepada blue. Whereas, kalau uh, plasmid tu tadi uh, been insert by our gene of interest, okay, then broke the lexi gene. Right? So this is what we call recombinant plasmid. So when this happen, lactose tu tadi tak boleh nak, tak boleh nak uh, uh, be used by beta galactosidase. Sebab apa? Sebab beta galactosidase tak, tak produce sebab lexi ni dah, dah broken lah. Okay? So the the colonies appear is what colonies indicate there is a recombinant plasmid. Okay, next, uh, more detail, the Lexi gene is code for beta galactosidase enzyme. So, yang ni yang lag operon ni yang you tengok kat sini lah. So, this is the Lexi gene, right? Include all the lag operon. Then, uh, right, so the lag operon, Uh, bila bin uh, <laughs> bila bin uh, transcribe dia akan jadi mRNA and from mRNA translate dia akan jadi uh, uh, enzyme beta galactosidase so beta galactosidase tadi dia akan break down the lactose into galactose and glucose this is in normal condition right this is in normal condition but then kat dalam Uh, plasmid vector kita the Lexi gene can be broken into two parts which is alpha and beta each part encoding a fragments of the beta galactosidase enzyme so kat dalam uh, plasmid tu tadi dia ada dua part part uh, alpha and beta so when we join together alpha and beta ni baru dia jadi beta galactosidase enzyme lah ok and bear in mind alpha is is come from our plasmid vector whereas beta come from the uh, E. coli chromosome which is come from uh, host okay come from host so uh, uh, host okay contoh ini pakai E. coli kan okay ada juga host E. coli yang tak boleh produce uh, lexi Eh, yang tak boleh uh, uh, yang, tak, yang tak boleh produce uh, 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 Lexi beta ni ok so ada sebab dia ada reason dia ok so bila you nak pilih host you expression host you you for example you beli ke you dapat berdua orang ke you tanya dulu uh, yang ni uh, boleh express Lexi tak uh, host ni so kalau boleh express Lexi baru you boleh pakai a vector yang ada Lexi punya uh, gene Okay, so Lexi from the plasmid ni tadi Dia akan express 
uh, alpha fragments of the beta galactosidase. Okay, so the beta fragments is actually come from the E. coli chromosome from the host. So that the two fragment kan? So yang ni datang pada host, yang ni datang pada plasmid. So they can combine together. So bila they combine together, barulah it been activated. Okay. So bila dah been activated, uh, dekat dalam media tu tadi, instead of lactose, kita pakai X, Sgal, substitute of lactose. So Sgal ni tadi, uh, uh, mimic of the lactose will be used by beta galactosidase and it will be broken down into blue color and glucose. Okay, so blue color ni tadi lah yang menyebabkan koloni tu jadi warna biru. Okay, so hopefully you faham lah explanation ni. So, eh, lexi beta from E. coli chromosome. Okay, you you have to, uh, how to say, uh, broaden your uh, uh, thinking in that, in such a way that dalam host tu tadi, you ada plasmid you, you ada chromosome you. So, bila replication berlaku, it happen in 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 both uh, situation. It happens kat dalam plasmid kita and it happen also kat dalam uh, host DNA. So, dua-dua is being replicated and being uh, expressed uh, into a protein lah in, in, uh, in, 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 uh, when it needed. Okay. Alright. Uh, Okay, to do blue-white screening, uh, to do blue-white selection screening, the genes of interest is cloned into multiple cloning site, MCS. Okay, so macam tadi lah, MCS yang tadi terletak ke dalam leg, leg Z. Okay, transformers are plated onto a medium containing antibiotic for selections and it been induced by IPTG. IPTG is short form for isopropyl beta D1 thiogalacto uh, pyro, py, pyranocytes to induce expression of the leg, leg Z. Okay. As well to detect present of beta galactosidase. Okay. So, uh, transformer with vector only. Okay. No, ni sekarang ni kita cerita pasal vector saja. So, Lexi, ex, Lexi from the plasmic express alpha fragment, okay? And complete beta fragment to fully activate the enzyme. So, beta fragment ni come from the E, E. coli. And hydrolyze exgal, blue color to, uh, blue blue color colonies will be formed. Okay, dia macam ni. Okay? So, uh, this is uh, inhibitor. Right, so inhibitor also been expressed and uh, uh, akan jadi inhibitor protein. So inhibitor protein ni tadi, dia tak boleh bind dekat uh, operator punya site. Okay, so kalau dia dapat bind dekat operator punya site, RNA polymerase tak boleh nak transcribe. So uh, alpha fragment tak akan terhasil. Okay, so uh, how to avoid uh, inhibitor bind to operator? We need IPTG. Inilah IPTG ni tadi. So IPTG ni tadi, masa kita buat, uh, uh, kita dah dapat stable cell line, right? kita nak express kita punya protein, selalunya kita akan bubuh IPTG. So IPTG ni, they induce lexi for formation. So, bila kita, uh, APTG uh, is added in the media, APTG dia akan bind ke inhibitor lah. So, they avoid inhibitor ni to bind to operator. Then, RNA polymerase pun boleh uh, uh, apa ni, uh, baca the whole gene lah. Right, translate the whole gene. And translate jadi jelah mRNA and jadi alpha fragment. So, alpha fragment jadi akan jadi beta galoxidase combined with beta fragment. So, dia boleh convert uh, as galdari into blue to glucose. Okay, so th this is actually uh, 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 positive control. Okay, control vector only. Whereas, kalau kat dalam recombinant, so lazy, imagine kat dalam recombinant, lazy gene tadi dia potong. So, apa kita insert kita punya uh, gene of interest. Okay, kat tengah. So, lazy is destroyed by inserting of foreign genes. So, means that no alpha fragment. So, alpha fragment takkan berlaku lah. Cannot form full active enzyme 
no hydrolysis of agar exgar so bz corneal yang produce adalah white color same method juga kita pakai aptg so aptg yang tadi bila kita bubuh inhibitor tak boleh bind rna permeation akan uh, baca the whole gene include kita punya protein right uh, for example insulin protein so kat sini lah tadi insulin protein tu akan produce banyak-banyak sebab apa sebab aptg ni dah induce dia punya uh, expression Faham eh? So, uh, in such a way, lazy tak ada. So, lazy tak ada. Tak ada mRNA into lazy. Tak ada alpha fragment. Tapi, uh, beta galactosida beta still ada. Sebab daripada from uh, E. coli punya kromosom punya host. Tapi, dia tak fully activate lah. Sebab tak ada uh, alpha punya fragment. Right? So, in such a way, dia deactivate. So, as gal tadi, tak boleh di hydrolyze means that there is no blue, blue colour ok ha, ha, ni blue colour ni so this is white colour, this is blue colour, blue colour ni positive control lah means that insertless, tak ada insert so white colour ni ada insert, positive results ok uh, ni pun ni boleh baca sama juga Sama juga, alright? Sama juga, they combine PCR and analysis screening. Okay, analysis of clone DNA. It, it is the one, the one you wanted. What are its molecular characteristics? I'm not sure what is this. Okay, uh, oh, habis dah eh? Oh, ni, ni, description mapping determine the order of this. Oh, ni dia punya term ni lah, term. Alright, mm, gel electrophoresis, uh, sorten blood analysis. Sorten blood analysis ni tak belajar lagi lah. Okay, I will explain to you later. Dia ni sequencing atau tak belajar lagi. Yang you dah belajar, gel electrophoresis dengan description mapping. Alright guys, Sarakallahu Alazim, Alhamdulillah habis, ya, yeah, one hour. Exactly one hour. Right, okay class. So, I hope uh, you get something from my lecture. And I hope everyone puhati lah uh, dengan my explanation. Kalau ada soalan, you can easily ask me through WhatsApp or you can boleh hantar juga kat Google Classroom. Just comment kat bawah tu and just ask uh, whatever you want. I realize that when I... Uh, do a lecture on lecturing online macam ni I dapat banyak soalan daripada you guys which is very good hmm, soalan eh ha, uh, to whatsapp so ramai yang private uh, whatsapp saya tanya soalan so it means that dalam kelas mungkin you malu kot nak tanya kan so don't mind so you can ask whatever you want to whatsapp or to private message whatsoever yang you yang you suka lah yang you rasa sesuai dengan you ok so again uh, stay at home, jangan main kat luar right? so hopefully everyone sihat-sihat saja. ok so hopefully I can see you guys on the next lecture uh, kalau sesiapa nak online class still nak buat online class, bila online interactive you just let me know lah and I will figure out how to do it first we can use Google Meet so, kalau you nak buat online class nak jumpa, minta kita ada two way communication so you just bring tower nanti kita we try to conduct uh, online online class live okay okay till then see you guys next week insyaallah assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh take care bye go